Hello everyone, for today's report, I and my co-reporter, Rodette Sandrino, will go in to report learners with exceptionalities. So first, let us define the word exceptional learners. The term exceptional learners includes those learners with special needs related to cognitive abilities, behavior, social functioning, physical and sensory impairments, emotional disturbances, and giftedness. So, exceptional learners are those learners with disabilities as well as those who are gifted and talented. Exceptional learners are the ones who are in need with so much love, care, attention, support, and consideration. Exceptional learners doesn't mean that does not mean that they are out of the league or that they are different in the totality because some exceptional learners is just a victim of a judgmental society or a society that set exceptional learners as derogatory or someone that is incapable of doing something. Disability a disability is a measurable impairment or limitation that interferes a person's ability. For example, to walk, to live, to hear, or to learn. So, disability is a condition of the body and the mind that makes a person have a lack of inability to do a certain activity or to interact with the world. With this ability, a person has a functional limitation or this a, there is a restriction on doing something or in communicating and collaborating with other people. This ability is internal and genetically inherited. Handicap the word handicap does not have the same meaning as disability. A handicap is a disadvantage that occurs as a result of disability or impairment. The degree of disadvantage or the extent of the handicap is often dependent on the adjustment made by both the person and his environment. So, if the disability is a condition, an internal or genetically inherited, and a lack of ability, the handicap, on the other hand, is a disadvantage, which is external and described as a lack of opportunity. Handicap is a weakness, a problem, or a disadvantage in fulfilling a normal life. Handicap is considered offensive. That's why people nowadays use the term disability to describe a person who does not walk, does not talk, and does not hear or etc. Handicap cannot use the part of the body or the mind because it has been disa disabled or damaged. Thus, the handicap is the result or the consequences of the, the disability. For example, the use of wheelchair limits the person to move around and to do a certain action in which the support and the assistant of the people that surrounds him or her is much needed. And that is what we call the handicap, a limitation on doing, uh, on doing an action and a lack of opportunity and disadvantage in fulfilling a normal life. Categories of Exceptionalities there are different ways of presenting categories of exceptionalities. Special education practitioners would have varying terms and categories. 
For this short introduction of categories, we are basing it on the categories found in Omrod's Educational Psychology. Specific Cognitive or Academic Disabilities First, we have the Learning Disabilities. Learning disabilities involve difficulties in specific cognitive processes like perception, language, memory, or metacognition that are not due to other disabilities like mental retardation, emotional or behavioral disorders, or sensory impairments. So, learning disabilities are any intellectual difficulty in doing activities. It is a disability that deals with the difficulty in memorizing, remembering, percepting, and difficulty in any metacognitive processes. Learning disabilities may be the difficulty in reading, in verbal communication, and so on and so forth. Something that deals with the learning of these students. The next one is the ADHD or the Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is manifested in either or both of these two. The first one is the difficulty on focusing and maintaining attention, and the second one, the recurrent hyperactive and impulsive behavior. So, ADHD is a chronic condition, which includes inattention, which is mentioned on the definition, and excessive movements and action that is not fit on the setting, and impulsivity, or the hasty actions that is made by those persons with ADHD. Usually, ADHD people need a longer patience or a full attention and an unending support or assistance for them to be seen. Any unnecessary movements or behaviors towards ADHD person or people should be avoided because it can intimidate or trigger their disorder and it will make them more hyperactive and impulsive towards themselves and towards other people. Speech and Communication Disorder There is difficulty in spoken language, including voice disorders, inability to produce the sounds correctly, stuttering, difficulty in spoken language comprehension that significantly hamper classroom performance. So, speech and communication disorders is a disorder that deals with the difficulty in speaking and communicating. It may be a problem in verbal communication or oral motor function. It may also be a problem in recognizing and understanding the language, the language sounds, and the construction of the words. Or a problem in speaking the words clearly or and apprehensively. So we come now to the second category of exceptionalities, which is the social, emotional, and behavioral difficulties. Under these difficulties, we have first the autism or the autism spectrum disorder. Autism is a condition manifested by different levels of impaired social interactions and communications, repetitive behaviors, and limited interests. Individuals with autism usually have an intense need for routine and predictable environment. So, autism usually deals with the difficulties or problems in speaking and learning. People with autism may avoid other people. They may behave and act in a strange way and they may move in an unusual ways like flapping their hands or speaking repetitively. They 
people with autism may also have a trouble in interpreting. They also prefer to be alone, they avoid eye contact, and they also hate loud noises. Autism, just like ADHD and other disorders, usually needs a full-time full care and attention. And autism must have a consistent and stable routine or environment because any changes or any small or slight disruption on their routine may cause or may make them feel distressed and confused. That's why people with, with autism usually need help in managing changes like leaving the home. Mental retardation. Mental retardation refers to significant sub-average intelligence or deficits in adaptive behavior. There is difficulty in managing activities for daily living and in conducting themselves appropriately in social situations. So, mental retardation from the term itself is about the abnormality or the slow progress and development in intellectual ability. Mental ret retardation is about the difficulty in intellectual disability or in, in intellectual functioning, which is characterized by the difficulty in coping up or in dealing with different activities in the environment. Mental retardation is measured by equivalent IQ of 70 to 75 or below, which implies to being intellectually disabled. The causes of mental retardation may be genetic, at birth or after birth, by social factors, and infections. Emotional or conduct disorders. This involves the presence of emotional states like depression and aggression over a considerable amount of time that they notably disturb learning and performance in school. These also term as emotional disturbance and emotionally challenged. So under this, when administering consequences, provide feedback to the student in a calm and clear manner. That way, the student understands why the consequence is necessary. Students with emotional and behavioral disorders, or EBD, find it difficult to control their behavior and work as productive members of a classroom. These students often lack impulse control and may have a difficult time effectively handling social interactions with other students. This can result in disruption of classroom activities and affect academic outcomes. Not to mention added challenges for the teacher as she tries to ensure the needs of all her students are met. Physical and health impairments. This involves physical or medical condition, usually long term, including one or more of these. Number one limited energy and strength, number two, reduced mental alertness, and number three, little muscle control. Under this, um, this can include any of number of disabilities, such as orthopedic impairments, example club foot or cerebral palsy, or other health impairments like asthma, hemophilia, or lead poisoning. For children with physical and health impairments or traumatic brain injury, they might need slightly different support from the teacher. They often need an interdisciplinary team or professionals to aid in all of their special needs. Severe and multiple disabilities Students with multiple impairments have more than one disability in cognitive, physical, 
and functional abilities. They typically require intensive intervention and supports for activities of daily living. Multiple disabilities means a student has more than one a serious disability which may affect mobility, behavior, emotion, or sensory abilities. Some characteristic challenges of individuals with severe multiple impairments are number one, limited communication or speech impairment, number two, problems with physical mobility, and number three, cognitive impairments. This disability category includes students with a combination of physical and cognitive conditions, which affects the student's ability to learn and access the academic, social opportun and social opportunities in school. The more severe the disabilities, the greater the effect on the student and the greater the need for extensive ongoing support and services. It is important to remember that abilities can vary widely from student to student. We come now to the sensory impairments. Visual impairment. These are conditions when there are malfunctions of the eyes or optic nerves that prevent normal vision even with corrective lenses. Visual impairments can be divided into low vision and blindness. Individuals or students with low vision can function but with assistance of optical or non-optical devices and environmental modifications and or techniques. Blindness refers to being without functional use of vision and reliance on other sensory systems for education. Hearing impairments. This involves malfunction of the ear or auditory nerves that hinders perceptions of sounds within the frequency range of normal speech. Hearing impairments can be subdivided into hard of hearing or profoundly hard of hearing or deaf. Students in the latter two groups cannot rely on audition as a primary avenue for assessing information. Even with the use of hearing aids, those classified under the former rubric can process auditory information, usually with the help of hearing aid. Hearing loss is measured in decibels, amplitude of sound waves, a measure of loudness. Ranging from mild hearing loss, inability to hear a whispered conversation in a quiet atmosphere, 15 to 40 dB. The profound hearing loss cannot hear speech and perhaps hears only extremely loud noises such as a chainsaw. Visual aids for hearing impaired students, since vision becomes a hearing impaired student's primary means for receiving information. Utilize visual aids whenever you can. Consider using posters, charts, flashcards, features, manipulatives, graphic organizers, artifacts, or any visual items to illustrate concepts. Try also to use caption videos in class. Encourage youngsters with visual impairments to listen for the voice of their teacher or the person who is speaking during activities. Teach them to turn their bodies so that they face the speaker while seated. This will take practice until it becomes natural. Giftedness This involves a significantly high level of cognitive development. There is unusual high ability or aptitude in one arm or more of these aspects. Number one, intellectual ability. Number two, aptitude in academic objects, creativity, visual or performing arts, or leadership. Under giftedness, um, gifted children possess demonstrated or potential abilities that give evidence of high performance cap capabilities in areas such as intellectual, creative, academic, 
or leadership ability, or visual, or performing art. For that reason, these children require activities or services not provided ordinarily by schools. Gifted and talented children tend to be highly motivated, learn to read early, and perform well academically. People First Language What is People First Language? Just as the term would imply, this language trends involves putting first, not the disability. Example, a person with a disability and not a disabled person. Thus, people first language tell us what conditions people have, not what they are. This is similar to saying person with AIDS rather than AIDS victim. Other suggestions for referring to those with disabilities include Avoiding generic labels, person with mental retardation is preferable to the mentally retarded. Meaning, avoid labeling persons and putting them in categories, as in the handicapped, the disabled, the deaf, the retarded, the learning disabled, and so on. Emphasize people, not labels. Instead, use terminology such as people with mental retardation, people who are deaf, people with disabilities, and so on. Emphasizing abilities, not limitations, for instance, uses a wheelchair is preferable to confine to a wheelchair. Do not use subjective descriptors such as unfortunate, pitiful, or sad. When describing people with disabilities, emphasize abilities. For example, instead of saying John is confined to his wheelchair, use a positive expression of ability such as John uses a wheelchair, or Mary is partially sighted rather than Mary is partially blind. Avoiding euphemisms such as physically challenged, which are condescending and avoid the real issues that result from a disability. Meaning, emphasize the individual, not the disability. Rather than using terms such as disabled person, handicapped people, a crippled person, use term such as people persons with disabilities or a person with a visual impairment. Avoid implying illness or suffering. Had polio is preferable to is a polio victim. And has multiple sclerosis is preferable to suffers from multiple sclerosis. Using people first language and applying the guidelines above will remind you to have a more respectful and accepting attitude towards learners with exceptionalities. The presence of impairments requires them to exert more effort to do things that others like us find quite easy to do. They are learners who may turn to you for assistance. Beginning with the right attitude, one of compassion, not of pity or ridicule, will make you a more effective teacher. One with the hand and the heart who can facilitate their learning and adjustment. That would be all. Thank you.